Yo, what is up guys? Jack Gardner here. Today we are looking at one of my favorite topics, triads. Triads are an amazing way of implying harmony, both in terms of our chordal playing and our lead playing when we utilize them as arpeggios. Today we are gonna be looking at how you can learn them from say, complete scratch all the way to a kind of advanced level, utilizing them in different ways, both in terms of our lead playing and our chordal playing. Just a quick word from today's sponsor before we go into this lesson. Today's video is sponsored by musicbro.co.uk. Musicbro is an online educational platform with tons of guitar courses and lessons from myself and a load of production and songwriting courses from my partner in crime, Owain. If you are interested in tabs and PDFs of all of these examples today, plus two extra levels or exercises, then please do check out Music Bro straight after this video. Without further ado, let's go into level one then. Okay, so with level one, all we want to do is understand what a triad is and how we can construct one. So if you are a complete beginner, you've probably looked at these open chords, the basic ones. <laughs> And they are all constructed via triads, just in different inversions. More on that later. But I just want you to see that you have probably already played one, even if you don't know what they are. But essentially, triad means three notes. So in order to understand how we can construct one, I want to take a major scale first. So we're just gonna take the C major scale. I want to label this in terms of intervals. So I would have root, Major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seven. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, in terms of constructing this very first triad, all we need to do is take a root, a third, and a fifth. So in this case, we have the root of C. The third note of that scale is the note E, the major third. And then the fifth note is the note G. We play them together and we've got a C major triad. And doesn't that look exactly like this? It's just here we've doubled the root note or one octave. So a triad is essentially the one, three and five of the harmonized scale. Now, in terms of the relationship between those notes, they are stacked thirds. If you think that's a third, and that's a third, but you don't need to understand too much of that just yet. Now, if we wanted to build the other types of triads, we just need to change certain intervals. Now, to clear things up, there are four types of triads. We have major, minor, diminished, and augmented. Today, we are just gonna focus on major and minor, but if you are interested in diminished and augmented, check out my course on Music Bro. But essentially, a major triad the only difference between this and a minor triad is the third. So when we take this C major, if we wanted a minor triad, we just have to flatten that third. And there we have it. So a minor triad in its construction is just root, flat three, and the fifth. Major triad is root, major third, and the perfect fifth. So major triad, minor triad. And if you know this and you understand how these are constructed, you can make it from any root note. So I could do this from F, from G, from A. I just need to know the root note and to be able to see these other two notes next to it, the third and the fifth, or the flat third and the fifth minor. So that concludes level one. Let's move on to level two. 
Okay, so with level two, we want to talk about inversions and what on earth is an inversion. So remember, I spoke about the construction of these being one, three, five. An inversion is where we simply change that order. These are much easier on a piano. When you see on a piano, you have the note C, E, G. If you want to invert that, it's very easy. You just change that order to E, G, C. Then the next one would be G, C, E. On guitar, this is much more difficult because we have multiple options. But the way in which I like to learn these and to practice them is to think of four different string sets on the guitar and split these triads into those four different categories. We are going to take the first one and I would call this the A string set because it's got the A string, D string and G string. But we're going to take that triad and look at how we can invert it. So like I say, we have the notes C, E, G, or the intervals, root, third, and fifth. If I want to invert this, I can take each one of these notes up to the next interval or the next note. So in the order, remember, C, E, G. So this note C would go to E. This note E would go to G. And this note G would go to C. And we get what's called first inversion. So we've got the third, the fifth, and the root, or E, G, and C. If you know the tune Sweet Home Alabama, it's that shape. You've probably seen it and played it already. If I invert that again, I'm gonna take that note E to G. I'm gonna take this note G to C. And I'm gonna take this note C to E. And I would get this. Now, doesn't that look familiar? Looks like an open E major chord or bar chord. It's just these three. And that's what we call second inversion. So we've got the fifth, the root, and the third there. If we invert that again, we're just going to go back to the first shape, root, third, fifth, C, E, G. Now, the way I would practice this is to just take that one string set and build an arpeggio. Now, what I can do is do this on every string set. I just need to find the root note and build the root inversion triad. So on the low E string, notice how they are all the same shapes. If I go to the D string, and then the G string set. So four string sets, E string, A string, D string, and G string. And you learn all of those triads that way with the inversions, building arpeggios. Anyway, let's move on then to level three. So in level three, we're going to take a look at minor triads. For some reason, these are always harder for guitar players to learn or visualize. I've always found, I don't know why, it's just one note difference. If you are learning these in terms of their interval structure, then this should be quite straightforward. All we need to do with all of the major triads we've learned is flatten that third. So we take that one from the A string set here, the root inversion. If I just flatten the third, I have a minor triad now. And I would take this same idea of inverting these. So root inversion, that's one flat three, five. The first inversion would have the third on the bottom. So that's gonna be flat three, five, one. And then second inversion always has the fifth on the bottom. So that would be five, one, flat three. We invert it one more time. We get back to root inversion. And again, I would practice these as arpeggios with these string sets, the four string sets. So starting on the A string, you get. If I do it on the E string set, so the low E string, you'll notice they are the same shapes. If I do it on the D string set, starting from root inversion, And then I do it from the G string set. So this one from root inversion. And they are all the triads covered essentially for major and minor. Remember, it's so important that you see these as intervals, at least for me. So when I see root inversion, I know that's one, two, uh, one, three, um, five, or one flat three, five in this case. 
Second inversion is always going to be the third on the bottom, so three, five, one, or flat three, five, one for minor. And then the second inversion is always going to be five, one, flat three for minor, or normal three for major. And within these, I'm always trying to see the root as well. That's important for when we start applying these to chord structures or when we're improvising. I always like to see where the root note is inside these triads. So here, it's this one. Here, it's this one. And here, it's this one. More on that later, but that is level three. So you practice them as arpeggios on the string sets this way. So horizontally. Okay, so with level four, what we want to do is to start visualizing these triads vertically rather than horizontally. What do I mean by that? So, so far we've been taking a string set and we've been moving just this way horizontally across the guitar neck. What we want to do now is keep into a more consolidated area of the fretboard and have a way to practice these. So this entails taking, say, root inversion on the E string set and then moving across string sets. So I get first inversion on the A string set. If I move across again, I'm on the D string set now, I would get second inversion and then move across again and we're back to root inversion, but this is on the G string set now. And so we get we're moving this way instead, it's much closer together. Now, I could start this from first inversion and use the same kind of principle. So if I started here, this is first inversion. Then I'd move across to the A string set and get second inversion. Move across to the D string set, I get root inversion. Move across to the G string set and I'm back to that first inversion. Do it one more time and we'd be starting from that second inversion. On the A string set, root inversion. On the D string set, I get first inversion. And then on the G string set, I get second inversion again. I could do that an octave below. This is just another great way of seeing these triads closer together in one area of the fretboard across the strings. So we're going vertically rather than horizontally. Now you could do this with minor triads as well. So if I take the same principle, I'm gonna start off on that root inversion on the low E string. I could move to first inversion. And then second inversion. It's the same idea. It's just a different way of practicing them and visualizing them. Make sure to check out my fretboard visualization course over at Music Bro, where you can either stream it if you're a member or download it if you want to purchase it. But we cover all of these kind of things. Anyway, without further ado, let's move on then to level five. So in level five, what we want to do is look at building triads within a harmonized scale. So what does this mean? Well, remember way back when we looked at the C major scale at the beginning of the video? <laughs> When we built our first triad, we built it from the root note and we created C major. But we can actually build a triad on each degree of this scale. So if we were to take the second note of the scale, D, we can actually build a triad there. So we're using the principle of thirds, or one way which I like to do it is to play the scale where we take one note, skip this one, take this note, skip this one, and take this note, and then we've got this. And that is a D minor triad. So I know on the second degree of this C major scale that I have a minor triad. That goes for any major scale, it doesn't matter where you are, the second degree is always minor. And we can do this for every degree of the scale. So if we, again, just to recap, if we were to start on the root, we'd get major. Go to the second, we get minor. Go to the third, we get minor. Go to the fourth, we get major. Go to the fifth, we get major. Go to the sixth, we get minor. And then on the seventh, we get diminished. And then we're back to major. So you could practice your scales using these triads to harmonize them. 
You could do this across every string set. You could apply this with those exercises where you move horizontally as well. Sorry, yes, vertically as well. Um, there's tons of different ways you can practice this, but the most important thing is understanding that we have now harmonized the scale, and this is what we call diatonic harmony. It's where we can get all of our chord structures from, and that is what we're gonna look at in level six, how we can actually start practicing these triads with chord structures. So now in level six, we want to look at a chord structure. So the fact that we've already harmonized the scale, we can number every degree of that scale. And if we know which triad falls on which degree, then we can create these chord structures very easily. So one which I like to do is the one, six, four, five to practice this. So in the key of C, that would be C major. We've got A minor. We've got F major on the four and G major on the fifth. So it's C major, A minor, F, G, or one, six, four, five. Now, in terms of where you see these, this is gonna be important. So we just want the basic root triads at first. So if I was to take, say, C major, I have this one here. I could take an A minor here for the six chord. For the major chord, F, I could take this one. And for the G, I could take this one. So you've got. And I would do this across different string sets. So I could start on the E string here. So. And I'm getting all of the sounds of the harmony just with these triads. Now, in terms of what you could do next, it's a great idea to limit yourself to one area of the fretboard. So I could take, for example, any of the inversions of these chords, but looking for them in a really small area of the neck. So if I took that C there, I can see that there's an A minor triad here. And that is starting essentially from that second inversion. We just want to see that it's close. Then I can see an F here. And then I can see a G here. Nice and close together. So I'm going. I can move that to a different position so I could get this. Move it to another position again. It just opens up the fretboard and we're not limited to just these chords anymore. This kind of idea, we've got freedom. If I just improvise a little bit with this chord structure, let's hear how that can sound just using triads and their inversions. So. Really, really cool and useful. And you can apply this to any chord structures you like within that diatonic framework. What lots of people like to do is the one, four, five because they're all major, this kind of idea. I like to do that one, six, four, five because I'm getting a minor triad in there and that's what you should be practicing, both major and minor. And if you're feeling adventurous, diminished, maybe augmented. But for now, that covers this level. Let's move on to the next one.
So now in level seven, we want to start looking at these triads as arpeggios or single notes played one after each other. And this is often very hard for guitarists to have a concrete method in which they approach these and visualize these. For me, I like to keep things really simple, but I like to view them in terms of intervals. So the way in which I do this is I start by limiting myself. I find a root note on the low E string and then I try to build it from the first finger. So I would get root, then I get the major third, then I get the fifth here. Now, instead of going, okay, let's move on and let's find more shapes, I think, can I play that starting from my second finger and see where these intervals are? So if I start with the second finger on that same root note, the third is now actually here on the A string. And then the fifth is with the pinky here on that A string. So it changed from to this. I do the same thing starting from my third finger and then the same thing from the fourth finger and they are very often the same shape. But then I've got four different ways to play that C major starting from that root note. I could do the same thing on the A string. It's gonna be very, very similar. Do it from the D string. Do it from the G string. And if you're feeling really adventurous, do it from the B. And then crazy adventurous is to do it on one string and you can do this on all of them, a single string. So you get this kind of idea. And then if you were to bridge those two, look, we've got a full shape where it's just two fingers. And that is another way of visualizing these. You can do that, like I say, on every single individual string. It's gonna look the same. If I go here, ah, sorry. And then here, here. They're all the same. And this is what's really cool about this visualization exercise, limiting it to that one string set, but also what we did with the individual fingers. Once you've done that from every root note on every string, then you've covered every possible C major triad across all of the fretboard. It's a lot of work, but it really comes in very, very handy. So good luck with that one. Let's check out the next level then. So in level eight, we're gonna take a look at another way of visualizing these triads, but this way to open up the fretboard horizontally. And this doesn't get spoken about enough when it comes to visual and triads, in my opinion anyway. What we are gonna do is take that low E string and build the triad shape. But what I should do is then move to the D string and you'll notice it's exactly the same shape. If I move to the B string, it's gonna be exactly the same. So we've got. Now I can do that from the third as well and I'll get a slightly different shape where I get this. Very, very cool. It's just one finger pattern and it moves through these three octaves essentially. I could go from the fifth as well and I get this. So I'm covering the whole length of the neck. So it's this shape from the root, from the third, it's this shape. And from the fifth, it's this shape. So, and you can start linking them. Just another really cool way of visualizing them. And it's moving you this way rather than one position. This is really tough. You can apply this to, of course, minor, diminished and augmented triads as well, but it's just another tool to add to your belt, really, in terms of visualization. Let's move on then to level nine. Okay, so in level nine, I want to see if I can use these triads as arpeggios to move through the chord structure that we had before. So we're gonna take that one, six, four, five. <laughs> 
And the very first thing you'd want to do is just see if you can create those arpeggios from the root notes of each chord. So C major, and then A minor, F major, G major. And if you can do this in time with a metronome or a backing track, even better. But really, it's about the visualization. You want to be seeing where these root notes of every chord are and where the rest of those thirds and fifths are on top. So if I was to do this, I want to just play four notes for each chord. <laughs> And that's where we are just kind of keeping to these root notes. And we want to be able to see if we can move freely with them. It's a true test of your improvisation skills and visualization skills, really. But now for a bonus challenge, we can call this level 10, if you like, is you want to see if you can freely move between these without it just being the root note. We're wanting to see connections, so it doesn't matter if we start on the third, the fifth, or the root. We just want to find ones that are close together and see if we can imply this harmony to the listener. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the chord structure, even though I'm not playing chords, I'm just playing these arpeggios. So we're gonna take that one, six, four, five, and I'm gonna try and connect these triads, connect the dots really. So let's give this a go. <laughs> Really nice and simple at first. I'm gonna try and improvise and play something a little bit more free time, but hopefully you'll hear the chord still, so. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear there all of that nice harmony and I'm just trying to connect all of these triads. I hope all of this has made sense. Remember there are some bonus levels over at musicbro.co.uk and if you are interested in even more in depth then check out the fretboard visualization course over there. If you want the PDFs for that you can of course purchase it as a one-time download or if you just want to stream all the content then as a member you have access to all of that. Hope you guys have enjoyed these ideas. Let me know what it is you'd like to see in a future video. I'm always down for kind of inspiration from you guys. Hope all of that made sense. Good luck with your triad journey. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.